I'm talking to Professor Bernard Lichard, the Chief Monitor Architect of the B Protocol Foundation. B stands for Bancor, and which is currently the largest ICO, which raised 120, $152 million in two hours. We all know you from the book uh, The Future of Money, Beyond Greed and Scarcity, and 10 other books in all kinds of different languages, and you're mostly famous because uh, you're credited with uh, coming up with the EQ in uh, 1997 when you worked at the National Bank in, um, in Belgium, and uh, you came up with this, uh, with this coin, which we're using every day, which became the Euro. Um, we were, uh, of course, very interested when we saw the Bancor, uh, when the Bancor ICO, and we saw you on the list. How did you get involved with Bancor? I discovered Bancor about six weeks ago uh, in a white paper that was sent to me from Israel. And uh, I uh, read it, and when I first read it, I said, this was a joke, this cannot be true, this is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. And so far, usually when I say it's too good to be true, it ends up being too, too good to be true for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I tried to dig into it, find a mistake, and then finally, uh, I needed to read it three times. I said, well, that is a breakthrough. Something is happening here that is a game changer. And uh, I was invited to Israel uh, for the D10E uh, conference on, on blockchains. Uh, in that context, and uh, so I decided to go and I met the whole team there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, now, why am I so excited? Uh, because actually it is better than I had hoped. <laughs> I've been, I had more interview requests about Bitcoin than about any other topic, mm -hmm. okay, uh, in the Bitcoin wave, and that was getting very boring because I always had to say the same thing. For me, Bitcoin is uh, not important. What is important is blockchain. Okay? Uh, and people think it's the same thing, and it's not. Okay? And uh, so, uh, now, I expected something to come out of, the, of blockchain as a consequence, but when I saw what it is, i.e. resolving the, the counterparty risk issue, creating liquidity and convertibility for all the long tail of complementary currencies, that is the game changer. Mm -hmm. And yes. the most essential thing about Bancor, it's not a coin, but it's a mechanism to make liquidity happen it between is a protocol. the different, between it is a protocol. The different coins. It's a protocol. It's a protocol. protocol. A protocol like the basis for the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a protocol behind the internet. Yeah. It's not a service, it's not something else, it's a way of doing things. And that is what the, the Bancor protocol is. The Bancor, the Bancor idea it consists of a number of different things. Yes. Yes, you have, of course, the Bancor team, first of all. Yeah, the Bancor team, the software developers, yeah. Who's, who's in Tel Aviv. They're all in Tel Aviv. They're, yeah. all, uh, they're all from there. They're all born uh, Sabras, uh, you know, uh, which is amazing, the homogeneity. And they're brilliant. <laughs> okay, they, they know what they're doing, mm -hmm. I believe. So uh, anyway, so they've been in this field for for quite a while before I knew them. I discovered them six weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so uh, anyway, uh, it it actually solves a number of very 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 fundamental problems uh, in the in the the issue of currency period. Okay. I mean, in other words, uh, the the entire foreign exchange trading field will change. Okay. In other words, there is no reason to have a difference between bid and ask. You know. So, in other words, there is no reason to have a spread. Yeah. Have you looked at the spread when you go to the when you go to the airports uh, to change your dollars or whatever? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That is not necessary. Okay. Bumper okay. protocol works with reserves. That's the key part. Mm -hmm. And the reserves have to be an ECR twenty uh, standard type of definition of a, a tokenized asset, <laughs> okay? So that is that is the one condition, okay? okay? And of course, in there, you have most of the currencies, you have gold, you have all the stuff that you can already have, but you can also have new things. As long as it's an ECR20 standard <laughs> uh, in, on Ethereum, uh, you can actually use something as a reserve. If, if you take an X-ray to the whole thing, you'll find Ether. Yeah, it's, it's based on Ether. And it's yes. based on within Ether on the ECR20 coin standard, of which a lot of exactly. coins are created at the moment. 
and it yes. provides liquidity between these uh, between all these coins which are um, it, based it on those. It provides liquidity and it provides convertibility. Yeah, automatically, without a counterparty. Uh, and well, what I'm trying to do is solve some specific problems. And the ones, the ones that I have been choosing as challenges uh, are not mine. Um, I've chosen the, the, the UN's uh, social, Sustainable Development Goals, the 17 goals of the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN that was decided in 1915. Sorry, in 2015. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm so wrong yeah. century. Um, the um, that will be attained by 2030. Okay, and of course, the little detail on that proposal is that nobody looked at what the, how to finance that stuff, and we need about four trillion dollars extra per year. Okay, to actually address these things, and I'm proposing that we can actually do this by With creating. By creating a uh, sustainability uh, token? By having the government spending money yeah. and delegating the credit worthiness to the people who receive it so that you actually create liquidity at the grassroots level, economically, okay, and thereby change the game so we can actually address the, the, the sustainable development goals. Like eliminate, we have the possibility, and that's the first one I would choose, to eliminate poverty. Mm -hmm. And I'm choosing, for example, the, the Greek pension tokeners are now in poverty. At 600 euros, they cannot survive. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, we can make sure that those people are okay. <laughs> okay. So you think that Bancor and the B protocol for the B protocol is actually a very big it, thing? It, it's the Bancor Protocol and the B Protocol Foundation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If if the uh, and what what do uh, what do the coins have to do to uh, obey the B Protocol standard? What do they have to do? They have, how do they? they ERC twenty standards. That's all. <laughs> but they also you say also they have to they have to uh, have, have a number of reserve a, a certain percentage. No, has basically, to be, the reserves need to be expressed in the ECRC, ECRC twenty standards. That's it. But that's the only condition. There is no other condition. Okay. So uh, and you can therefore use lots of different things for as as reserves. And when you put something in the reserves, you also keep it automatically convertible yeah. into okay. that currency on demand at any point in time without a counterparty. And what percentage of the coin, uh, of the total um, coin and amount, have to be uh, put into the reserve? What is uh, what is that? Is there a standard for that? No. You, the person, anybody who has a mobile phone connected to the internet on the planet, mm -hmm. can create his own currency using whatever reserves that he or she decides to choose. Yeah. Okay, and you can put in as much as you want or as little as you want, okay, he or she, or and create his currency, which is kind of like unprecedented. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the, at the moment, it is really easy to start your own currency already. I mean, yes. if, you, if you're using this, Ethereum, this it's really easy. easy. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Banker makes that even more easier, right? They've, yeah. They streamlined yeah. that process. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's what everybody understands. But the second part is that there's a system of reserves which makes it much easier to make them, and and then a protocol which makes it easier to convert between different yes. ether uh, different ether uh, coins. You know, based on these ECRs. Yes, right. All right. Yes. Okay. Fine. Yes. But they're not ethers. All right. They don't have to be ethers. Can be dollars. Can yeah. yeah. Be... Oh, they can be. Yeah, Professor, I'm just struggling to understand. <laughs> well, uh, welcome to the club. <laughs> it took me a little while too, okay? Because it is a paradigm shifter. Yeah, so it's a paradigm shifter because with Banker, if the Banker protocol is successful and adopted, it's, it allows every community and everybody, every company, every person to start their own coin. And mm -hmm. then to make it very easy convertible between their, that coin and other to use the, the correct vocabulary their own token their own token i'm sorry their yeah. own their own their own token based on ether based yeah. on ether ethereum uh, protocol uh, just, uh, and then yeah. to also make it and to also make it easily convertible
Yes. Okay. Automatically, not only easily. <laughs> Automatically. <laughs> Automatically. And they have to adopt that standard and they have to come up with reserves. Because what, de what determines then the value of uh, that token, of my own token, which I created compared to the dollar, the, 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 uh, the other cryptocurrencies? What determines that? It depends completely on what you put in reserves. <laughs> you could put in, say, US dollars at 100% of reserves. And you cannot do anything with it except US dollars at 100% reserves. <laughs> it's like having a dollar bill. Yeah. Okay? There's nothing more they can do with it. Okay? That's one option. Okay. And you can also other options, which are more interesting. Okay. Like, for example, having uh, uh, the Greek pension token uh, would actually re correct. Uh, the, the loss, loss of pensions for the uh, pensioners in Greece without having a uh, cost anything to the government. That is kind of nice. Something okay. which is today not possible. Okay, the Greek government could create a Greek pension token. Yes. And provide that to uh, and, and guarantee that provide that to the uh, to the pension holders. Provide and then to the mobile be... form of a pensioner. Yeah. And they would be able to spend. This, uh... And they would be able to spend more than what they receive. And would they be able to spend euros, or would they be yes, able to spend? They, they, it is convertible at any point in time in euros. Uh -huh. And so it would be, world. and it would be one third of the cost to the Greek government. Exactly. They would be using, uh, in my proposals, they would be actually using um, tax credits that are that are created by the Minister of Finance mm -hmm. instead of euros. And tax credits are worth to the government, to anybody who pays taxes to the Greek government, or worth what their face value is, right? Okay, I thought nobody paid taxes in uh, Greece. Well, unfortunately, let's say, put it this way, the uh, mo most of the very wealthy people don't, really, don't pay, ta pay taxes. <laughs> Everybody else has been paying a lot more. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Okay, so now you're head of the foundation. Uh, the the B no. protocol foundation. You're the no, chief. No, 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 head of the sorry, foundation. sorry. Uh, and you are the chief monetary architect of the B protocol yes. foundation. What is that? What does that foundation do, and what is your role? Well, uh, we've given an extraordinarily powerful tool to anybody on the planet with a mobile phone. Okay, and of course, you can do very intelligent things and very stupid things with it. <laughs> okay. And it might be useful that you basically, uh, well, uh, ask for some advice before you're doing it. Mm -hmm. We're also creating a space, which uh, I'm trying to call uh, Bancor for Play, where people can actually simulate uh, a particular system and a particular application without having real money behind it, without real ether behind it, okay? So you can actually test systems, test models, test things uh -huh. before you so there's are. There's going to be a lab. There's going to be a lab. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's a lab, and yeah. it's basically, and it's you know, it's a lab where you can do that. You cannot do any damage. All yeah. right. Okay. So, so when second. everything, when you when you break the thing, nothing has broken. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's part of the space. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that will be an experimental place, but it's actually available to anybody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what else is going to be there? Well, I don't know whether you want my uh, my biography or not. No, 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 no. I've been busy with monetary issues for about 40 years, okay, in unusual levels of different places, okay. I've, I've been I'm probably the only central bank who also managed a currency fund offshore, okay, for example, all right. So, uh, and I was at the central bank at the beginning of the EQ, uh, and uh, the uh, process was actually very funny. Uh, because uh, you had a big agreement in Bremen here uh, of uh, Giscard d'Estaing and Helmut Schmidt, and they had declared that Europe needs a zone of monetary stability, and nobody knew what that meant. So Giscard d'Estaing went to Paris and talked to the Banque de France and said, by the way, uh, do something purely European. And Helmut Schmidt went to the Bundesbank and said, do, do something that doesn't upset the Americans. Mm -hmm. These two ideas are not compatible. So the Bank of International Settlements, which is the club of the central banks, when they have a problem like that, they create a committee, okay? And they put in charge a country that doesn't have much illusions to manage the world. Belgium qualifies. 
<laughs> so, so that's why Belgium got the chairmanship of the EQ committee in Basel. And basically, you had my colleague, and I did give credit to my colleague, uh, Francois Haybart. He's the one who actually was a diplomat. And the hard work was the diplomacy. The, the, the easy part was the technical part. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So how do you, you, that's basically how that euro came by. I mean, I think actually one of the most interesting stories is that why did you not use the EQ, but why did you come up with the euro as a name? How did that uh, came about? Well, actually, that happened much, much later when I was not at the bank anymore. Yeah. Uh, the, um, uh, in the late 90s, uh, the Minister of Finance in Germany uh, said, EQ, EQ, that's a cow in German. We'll call it a euro. And that's it. <laughs> and there's a hell of a lot of diplomacy that went down the drain that minute. <laughs> <laughs> Very because for the French, of course, the EQ represented the, the highest coin denomination of under Louis the Ninth in the 12th century. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <Les plus d'or. laughs> yeah. So it's so it's really that's a really funny story. So Bernard, 